Chaos flight controllers gonna go for landing. Retro. Go. Rhino. Go. Guide. Go. Patrol. Go. Telcom. Go. GNC. Go. Econ. Go. Surgeon. Go. Capcom. We're go for landing. Hey everybody, welcome back to Spoon FPV. So I fly, or used to fly the, the Hawkeye VTX, and in my How to Fly with Friends video I was talking about, and I, I like it because it's a very small package, and in my How to Fly friend, with Friends video I was talking about being able to change power and how it's important to be able to change power when you go to an event if they require 25 milliwatts or 200 or whatever. So I'm switching everything over to the TBS uh, Unify Pro V2. And the reason I chose the Pro V2 is because it's the smaller package, but it only accepts five volts. Oh, and the other reason I chose is because it's all that I could find in stock everywhere. So hopefully, you know, maybe this will help uh, sell them out. So uh, this is what I've done with the, so this is the Unify Pro in the, the standard package. I don't know if you can see it through the glare, but it's the V2, which only accepts five volts. So this is the smaller package that I've made that's, smaller than the Hawkeye and you don't have to deal with um, you don't have to deal with uh, dip switches on this one so it's a lot easier to use and it's more friendly and it has multiple power output so you can have your race quad that's you know you're only allowed 25 milliwatts on the weekend when you're flying and you can fly it for acro and have one vtx on there and fly at 800 milliwatts and fly around you know buildings and trees and something that's uh, a little more of an RF challenging environment. So uh, I'm gonna show you how to build this. All right, so let's get started. First thing we're gonna do is open our TBS Unify Pro, the V2, the five volt version. Pull it out of the package here. Okay, so this, this will only accept a, a very narrow input voltage. I think it's like four and a half to 5.2 or 5.3 volts. So these are a little less expensive, but they, and, and they require 600 milliamps worth of power to them. So that's why we're doing, going through the trouble of making the, the voltage regulator package for them. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to take the, this guy right here, our, our, our buck regulator and we're going to so first we're, first thing we got to do is set the voltage on it so I'm going to solder on an XT60 connector here to this so that oh amateur hour oh there there's my sour okay solder okay so I'm going to solder on an XT60 connector so that I can connect it to one of my batteries if you have a power supply you probably don't even need to watch this video but so there's an inside it's uh, in negative and in positive so this is the where the voltage is going to come from and then this is where our five volts that we're going to that we're going to pull off of it is going to come out of now this this regulator here is capable of doing you know I inputs up to like 28 volts I think it is and then it can output uh, anywhere as low as like three volts so and the buck regulators are extremely efficient because they just switch on and off um, and they're not burning off energy as heat like the the linear regulators that are are also very common but the the because they're switching on and off quickly they create a little bit more electrical noise in the in the circuit which we're not really that worried about because the the team black sheep they're i think that they're they're dropping the voltage down with a linear regulator on this or something that's a little less noisy so th they do some power filtering and, and i haven't had seen lines in the video or anything so i'm going to plug this in uh, to a battery here move some stuff out of the way ah, ah, ah. that's what happens when you wire it backwards Boy, do I get to start over again. <laughs> ah. <laughs> what an idiot. Okay, well, I'd like to say that I did that on purpose, but even I make mistakes. Holy crap. So, uh, I thought maybe this input diode would have protected it from reverse voltage, but no, it's it's not. So, if you if you wire it up backwards, you are going to let the smoke out, just like I did. Solder these on there. 
and these joints don't have to be great this is just for me to set the voltage so now i'm going to check again minus plus hey look minus minus in okay now i can i'm good to plug something into it okay all right now we're going to set the voltage by pulling out our multimeter and measuring the output so we're going to measure the output voltage on that dc volts from positive to negative here so it's currently set at 10.17 volts hopefully you can see that so it's set at 10.17 volts i'm going to shift this a little bit so that you can see um, and there is a potentiometer here that i'm going to dial in and i'm going to dial it back to 4.8 volts so that we're within the threshold that the TBS likes. So you don't want to be too far, I think it's four and a half to five and a half volts is the input. So you don't want to be, so four point, eh. it doesn't have to be exact, right? So 4.9, that's pretty good. like 4.8 eh, 4.9 that works okay and now that I've done that I'm going to put a dab of hot glue on this potentiometer here so that oh, that's a big dab and I lick my finger and smooth it over. So I put a dab of hot glue on that potentiometer. So now that I know, I know that the, the voltage is set, I'm gonna recheck it one more time. So we have 4.9 volts with a, and we're getting, I think it's a, it should be around, uh, what is this on this side? So the input is 15 volts and it shouldn't matter what the input is as long as it's, you know, uh, a couple volts above the five volts which running 4s and 5s it, it should be fine so this will work all, all the way up to a 6s lipo to give you a five volt drop okay so now that we've done that uh, i'm going to set the voltage we're done with our done with our voltmeter so now i'm going to desolder the power that we put on here for our XT60 just to give us power to set the voltage. Desolder that bad boy. Then I'm going to grab some spare silicon wire that I had sitting around. We'll strip the ends and tin this. So basic soldering 101. Maybe I'll fast forward through this. All right, so now the connection's on here tinned, the wires are tinned, I'll just solder the, the wires on here. I like to solder them so that they're running up like this. That's not a very good joint. It's a much better joint. So I run the, the black, the negative wire around this way and then I'll run the positive wire up and through here so that they both come out in one spot. And again, once I get them where I want them, I'm going to pull the hot glue gun out. I'll put a little, little dab in there. This is really just to hold it until we heat shrink it. That's, now that's done. Let's take care of the output side. So we're going to take our TBS core here. See how it says 5 volts. Apparently, I guess they've probably had a lot of people plug these in and fry them immediately. But you need to have... It needs, it requires a five volt input. So I'll take this five volt sticker off of there. Come on. Now you get to see me fiddle with this. So, because people don't read the instructions and fry their stuff, you know, so. I understand TBS point, right? They want to give you a product that you're not going to destroy. So one end, one end of this plugs into like a Combini or, or whatever, and the other end plugs into the TBS. Um, I don't know what the other end's for, but 
I'm sure it plugs into something that I don't have. So, okay, find the end that plugs in. This is the end that plugs in. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take and well, I'm gonna just cut the other end because I'm not using it. There we go. Now I'm not fooling with that anymore. Okay. And this is the output side. So I take it and I, when I'm done, I'm gonna have them stacked back to back like this. All right? So now they're, they're back to back and it's a very thin uh, layout because you can actually see that this regulator is the same size as the, as the TBS Unify V2. So now I'm gonna take and make sure that we get red to red, black to black here again. So I'll make a little mark here with my fingernail on where I need to cut the red and then I'll run the black through, make a little mark my fingernail and then I will cut and strip these did I make a good yeah I did okay so you can't see my fingernail mark but here's my fingernail mark for the black and here's my fingernail mark for the red so those are all cut now I'll strip and solder those on there Now if you notice, when I solder the black wire on, I'm gonna solder it sideways like this so that when I, when I route it past the red wire here, like they both come out in one location. So I'm gonna, here we go. There's the ground. So now that's soldered. And we'll check our fit on our TBS here. So plug that guy in. And that's what it's gonna be when it's done. So now I'll shrink over, I'll shrink over this guy. So I have purple heat shrink that I have for all my ESCs. It's the the perfect size for this. I think, I think it's three quarters of an inch. And I'll cut this down to the right length. Well, this side's a little crooked, so I'm gonna straighten that out. I'll cut the other side down to the right length. I guess I should check my polarity one more time. Red, red, black, black. Yep, out, out, okay. So the reason I'm shrinking this separately is because there's actual, there's, there's PDB pads on the back of here and there's pads on the back of this and I, I want an extra, that extra layer of protection between the two because I don't want anything to short between the two, between the two circuits. So I, I'll shrink this one separately and then I'll shrink it together on the back of the, on the TBS. Now that's good and shrunk. And I will, I like to put a little dab of hot glue on the back of this guy. And smash them together. And I'll drop a little dab of hot glue in here too to kind of keep those wires where they are. And then I will shrink the entire thing down with uh, this clear. So this stuff is uh, PVC shrink if you're wondering what like the clear stuff they put over everything. Um, and I, I like to have a little bit on hand because it you can do things and then it makes it look super pro at the end. And the way that I'm running this ESC, I'm actually 
running the I know that I'm running the wires down one side so I'll put them down this side here and then I will or not, not ESC sorry this this VTX so put the wires down one side come on all right and then we're done so in the end you end up with a TBS Unify uh, transmitter that's capable of multiple power outputs with a removable uh, like UFL connector for the VTX which is the thing that always gets broken either on this end or whatever so you can replace that and it's not dip switch anymore and then to give you a comparison point this is the um, uh, gosh the Hawkeye VTX that uh, I used to fly primarily and it's dip switch based and this setup is actually still smaller in uh, from side profile uh, all around it's still smaller than the Hawkeye uh, VTX and there's no more dip switches it's multiple power it goes from 25 milliwatts up to 800 milliwatts and it's made by TBS so you know that it's going to be quality even though these Hawkeye things are amazing um, the, the dip switches uh, changing changing frequencies in the field becomes a pain in the butt and it doesn't offer multiple powers so now I'm switching everything over to the TBS Unify Pro so here it is that VTX installed on a, on a quad so this is the the little package that we made earlier and then this is it installed on a quad this is the giveaway quad um, for my 100 subscribers so that's the VTX and when I power this on you'll see all the little lights there so two beeps two two red lights one flash three red lights one flash so that's and then it's going to turn on so it's uh, 25 milliwatt um, channel A, channel 1 right now. It's not been set on this one. So there you go. All right, folks. So there you have it. That's how you take your TBS Unify, the 5 volt, which is pretty much all you can get because Unify Pros are, seem to be out of stock everywhere. And you make this nice clean package that's still smaller than your Hawkeye and is, um, and is made by TBS and a little more reliable and has multiple voltage outputs. So there you have it.